So Kanye has been going a bit of a rampage regarding Yeezys because at the moment, Alias is putting out a bunch of Yeezy stock without the Yeezy branding on them in different types of colorways. He's obviously not happy about it. And he made a post on his Instagram basically calling out Adidas. He's since deleted it, actually. Funny enough, he's deleted the actual post, so you can't actually see it. But I do have the tweet here where somebody took a screenshot of what he said. So he posted an update picture of the Yeezy that's coming out um, soon. It hasn't got any Yeezy branding on it. It's just a different colorway that they're putting out of the remaining stock, I guess, with no Yeezy branding. And Kanye kind of went off on it. The interesting caveat to kind of mention here is that going forward, somebody actually made a post on Twitter I saw that Adidas are changing the way that they do confirmed drops with Yeezy stuff. So before in the past, you would enter a raffle, similar to what you do with sneakers. And when you won the raffle, Adidas will charge you. Now, I guess the combat bots, allegedly, but I think more to secure money because they've probably got loads of this stuff available now, more so than the Yeezy stuff, because I'm sure the Yeezy stuff that was done officially was done in way more, was done in a lower quantity of numbers as opposed to the stuff they're doing now. So they're probably churning out more. But now they've changed the process. Now, when you try to buy a pair of Yeezys through the confirmed app, they will debit your account of whatever the value is. Then if you win it, the this, they'll put it in hold and if you win it the money will go to Adidas and if you don't it'll get refunded to you in 14 days so they kind of charge you up front and regardless if you're going to win or not you have to wait when you win so they kind of change the process all around there. and I think that obviously has to do with Kanye not being there and then wanting to sell way well Adidas's so a way more unofficial Yeezys so Kanye posted this on his Instagram before and this is the caption it says anybody who loves Ye would not buy these fake Yeezys I never made these colorways I'm not getting paid off of them and Adidas is suing me all of these celebrities the public will stand against a t-shirt or a color of my hat but when y'all see me and my children hidden from me or when you see an actual fortune cut 500 company rape one of your heroes in real life don't nobody say nothing or do nothing as far as the system goes what y'all gonna do now take my album down again freeze my accounts again threaten people to not work for me again all of these non-approved 350s are corny and everybody knows 350s been corny which is funny right like he made the shoe himself he designed them but even he knew wearing 350s was lame which is funny right because i never i never wore 350s not because i thought they were lame but because my feet are too fat they just don't look good in my feet i think 350s look good if you've got a skinnier foot if you've got a short foot if you've got a full up mind that's wide you wear fucking um 700s um you wear yeezy boots um you know there's plenty of other shoes that you can wear within the yeezy arsenal but you don't wear 350s because you know that sock fucking thing it kind of gives you know it gives everybody every view of all your toes wiggling in and around there so yay basically is saying that hey that's suing him allegedly um millions of dollars because i think he kind of they're alleging that he misused uh, marketing funds and kind of pocketed them all. And his kind of clapback is like, I am the marketing, like, which kind of makes a lot of sense in that regard. But in my personal opinion, I think it's twofold. I think it's unfair of Ye to demand his fans not to buy these shoes if they're fans of his. He's the one that signed the deal with Adidas. He knew exactly what he was getting himself into. He knew the business. He knew they were going to have control of his IP. He knew they were going to be snakes. Like he had, he had to have known. He's way too knowledgeable. He's way too old. He's way too experienced in the industry not to have known that the deal would be a bit of a fuck over. But what I thought he would have been okay with was even though they were most likely going to fuck him down the line, is it would increase his net worth. It would give him access to money that he could have probably never attained in that short period of time. Because people always said, um, when it comes to his net worth, um, most of the increase came because of the Adidas sales. Because if I'm not mistaken, there was a fucking crazy stat um, when he was still at Adidas that said like, you know, Yeezy accounted for like, over 30 percent of the overall ada sales right when it came to what they were doing so even though yeezy was not around that long um and it's obviously been around way longer they still accounted for up to 30 percent of the sales something crazy so i think he should have been okay with hey they're gonna fuck you down the road but you're gonna get all this money you're also gonna get all this experience you're gonna get access to all these fucking cat factories you're gonna be able to put your work out on the biggest fucking level and then you can kind of move on from there but it seems like you know when it comes to yeah he wants everything he wants the ability to work with these big companies say what he wants do what he wants and have them always kind of do things within his favor which i think is a bit unfair personally for me i think that shit's a bit unfair but the really crazy thing about this situation is this story which i've just seen on socials or which is kind of blowing my mind right this is a crazy story so this story was published last year and didn't really get much attention look at the fucking headline 
Ye's contract with Adidas prevented him from getting long-term mental health treatment. I repeat, Ye's contract with Adidas prevented him from getting long-term mental health treatment. Which kind of completely skewers what's going on because this is really fucking crazy. So let's read the actual article and what it says, the quote that's really concerning. But another termination clause Adidas added was not typical. 30 consecutive days of mental help or substance abuse treatment. In other words, if Ye spent a month receiving care or for significant aspects of his health and well-being, he could be forced to give up significant piece of what was then his greatest shoe empire of the modern era. He could literally lose billions. So he, he Adidas put in a term, a clause in his contract that meant if he got help, for all the issues that he was having that people were clearly saying hey he's got issues something's wrong with him he would be in danger of losing everything it would put all the control into ALS's hands because I guess they could say he's not within his capacity to make decisions blah 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 can you imagine how crazy this is so essentially Adidas are the ones that pushed him to the point of crazy to the point where he went on his anti-semitic fucking world tour where he went on to talk about Hitler and he went on to kind of dispute about dispute the holocaust he went on to fucking you know insult Jews in a way Adidas are the ones that propagated that I I see I I see good things about Hitler also the Jew, I love everyone. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. Are the ones that encouraged it, are the ones that kind of pushed him to that kind of end because they put the clause in the contract that if he tried to receive help for a consecutive number of days, it would maybe show that he's not in sound mind. Do you understand how crazy that is in business? So as much as I disagree with Kanye's opinions when it comes to business and I feel like sometimes he does manipulate his fans in a way he does kind of gaslight his fans because I feel like sometimes he can be a little bit annoying because he makes it seem like his problems business-wise should be our problems like you should deal with it why are you asking us like you you, you don't share your money with us why is now suddenly we have to fucking help you in your business decisions or help you with the custody of your kids it's really strange but I sometimes understand why he's paranoid, why he kind of has all these fucking fears in his head, because some of the shit he goes through business-wise is absolutely insane. Imagine putting that clause into someone's contract. Imagine that being a clause in someone's contract that if they receive help for the condition that they have, that's making them say all these crazy things, that it's going to absolutely destroy um, you know, their ability to make money and absolutely take away the one thing that's actually allowing them to kind of have generational wealth and kind of take themselves as a situation they're in. Imagine how fucking crazy that is. So I definitely understand why he was going as mad as he was. Now, he did actually vocalize all these things. So let's actually hear from Kanye himself and hear what he has to say about the whole situation. Um, one thing I love about this, clip is that he's obviously saying this in a hotel lobby or a restaurant somewhere while he's waiting for his food but i also love the fact that he's got this really amazing lisp now because he has these fucking crazy titanium teeth in his mouth he now has this crazy lisp that is super super funny listen to him speak let me explain really clear to you guys what's happening with adidas is not only are they putting out fake colorways that are non-approved, they're suing me for $250 million and they're also not paying me for these shoes that they're putting out that have my name on it. And they're using contract clauses and 50 years of business experience to rape an artist, one of y'all favorite artists, right in front of y'all in broad daylight. Let me explain. Really crazy, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. That <laughs> he said that <laughs> they're raping him. I guess that's why he had to change the caption. But um, again, um, you know, I guess you have to wait to see how this kind of pans out. I don't think Addison are going to drop the case. I think Kanye Javini is right to say what he's saying. He's trying to maybe publicly shame them into doing the right thing. But I think these big corporations are not going to drop these type of capes lightly because there's a lot of money on the line. And I think, unfortunately for Ye, I personally think he just annoyed too many people, bro. I think yeah, he's just a nightmare to deal with. Much as I love the guy, as a human being, he must be an absolute nightmare to deal with. Like I still kind of shudder at the thought when I remember that clip of him showing those ADS executives the video, the porn video, and saying, oh, one of the guys looks like the guy that works there and kind of showing them full fucking porn on his phone. 
and then looking at him like what the fuck are you doing do you know what i mean like he's just such a mad guy he's so inappropriate he's such a combative like confrontational dude he doesn't have any kind of tact when it comes to business that's probably why him and virgil probably had a lot of like issues when they were coming up because virgil was like the consummate kind of pro when it comes to dealing with corporations and brands and c-suite people yeah he just has no ability to deal with those people at all so maybe it's for the best that he's independent but i think a lot of the vitriol i think a lot of the scamming i think a lot of the pressure that Aidas are putting them in the courts is because they just don't like him as a person they want to bury him because of the things that he said and did and um, while he was there bringing the company to disrepute and shit so i just think he has to kind of swallow that one unfortunately i think that's the kind of price that you pay when you're yay you're gonna rattle some people and you're gonna make them really get you know really kind of have their fucking fangs out for you and when i think about one of the really interesting parts of the story when he kind of left adidas when he got booted from adidas if i remember correctly he was going at some woman or yeah, some woman that was a board member at Adidas or something. And this lady happened to also be the person that was a board member, I think at Chase Bank or one of those banks that Ye was banking with. And that led to his accounts being frozen. Can you imagine that? He's having beef with Adidas executives. He's arguing with these C-suite people, these boardroom people. He's, he's naming and shaming this woman. And this woman obviously had the power to fucking freeze his bank accounts like millions and millions you know he, he lost fucking access to for a period of time and maybe he was, doesn't have access to it now so it's fucking crazy to see like sometimes in, in the corporate world like you have to be careful who you piss off because they can legitimately ruin your life anyway the article um writer here just to end gave a little follow-up in terms of people asking hey why didn't this go viral at the time and i thought his um representation or interpretation of this was really interesting the writer of the article originally said um well the core piece of information was something i excerpt um from a much larger report in the new york times that filled with both previously reported new details from the years of yeezy business Significant details often get lost to readers in such large pieces. There's just too much information. Quite a few people read my piece when it was hit and many responded shocked, but it certainly didn't reach mainstream traction. I think that's unfortunate because regardless of the public views on Ye today, this clause was written in a contract preceding most controversy. Exactly. That's the thing that people don't get. That clause they put into his contract was before he said all those anti-Semitic things. So it's almost as if they were preempting they were hoping that he had a breakdown had a breakthrough went crazy so that they could take away his ip so they could take away all the ownership and obviously keep all the money for themselves it's absolutely crazy how they did put that clause in there and it's crazy to think that you can actually do that you know what i mean it's fucking wild um I think that's unfortunate because regardless of public views on year today, this call is written in contract preceding most controversy. In that way, it's not even a yay story to me, but a snapshot of how black creator could be set up to fail and lose billions. That much would have been clear to everyone setting up the contract going in. And this obviously leads me on to the point that I saw recently somebody made. I think it was flipping Stephen A. Smith. And he was just, I think he, because he made a point about like how pat mcafee like they can never be a black pat mcafee and i do agree with him even in the uk and europe i think it's the same i think unfortunately like immigrants or minorities just get dealt with in a different way when it comes to business which is why we need probably way more help and assistance when we do enter into those kind of boardrooms and why the margin for error for us is so much smaller really is fucking smaller um they just don't put up with the mess when it comes to us and they kind of manipulate cheat whatever it may be so you really have to kind of mind your p's and q's um not be super agreeable not obviously lick ass but just be aware of your surroundings because if they find an opportunity to fuck you over they will fuck you over that's much is true that much is true